Hello, welcome. I'm Leila Hashem, I'm Associate Curator at Barbican Gallery, Art Gallery, and I'm delighted to welcome Trajal Harrell, artist and choreographer, who is presenting a series of ambitious works in a performance exhibition spanning a 17-year career, I think it is, at the moment. Um, we're delighted and welcome, uh, to welcome you after your, you were here two years ago as a residency, yep. as back in Station to Station, but now bigger, better, <laughs> more ambitious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel um, with just a few days to go before we open on uh, the 19th of July? <laughs> I'm, I'm excited, but I think I, I kind of decided from the beginning that I would take everything day by day because it is quite ambitious. It's a lot of pieces. Um, I've never put up so many pieces at once, but it's also very exciting to be able to to become familiar with your work, work in again. such an yeah. intense way and have new people doing it and, and share it with new people. So it's, it's this, very exciting. This is the first performance exhibition of your work ever. Uh, yeah, yes. And yes. Um, it's been a long process. We did a recruitment back in, uh, in March for several people to come. You work with lots of international performers. Can you talk a little bit about the selection of the works, what kind of prompted you to choose these specific yeah, pieces? Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember, I mean, first of all, we, thinking about things that would fit in this particular space, because it's a very interesting space to work in. <laughs> it is. And, and um, I had worked here before, but also I think I really wanted to show the development of my work mm. and how I think the work really goes from these very particular experiments mm. in minimalism and I was looking at the, that, that then kind of became looking at the voguing dance tradition in relation to the early postmodern mm. dance tradition to um, now a research that I'm doing which is looking at early modern dance in Bouteau. But that said, I think that you see how I've come into a very, I started in something which was much more, let's say pedestrian, like the piece mm. people just saw. Yeah. It's just about sitting and walking and standing. And you've got the runway here. Yeah, you have the runway. But you see the pieces, the later pieces, and you see that that has become dance language. Mm. And that I've really evolved, that, that the work now is, I think, I think this is dance too, but I think that somehow now the ideas here in, in an embodiment of dance and meaning that mm. most people would say, okay, that's dance. Whereas a lot of people would just see this perhaps as pedestrian movement. And I'm not so much interested in that division anymore as I am in getting the kind of meanings I want out mm. of the dance language that I created. And there's lots of formal elements that kind of pop up at the moment. These platforms, these low-lying platforms yeah, yeah. that almost act like pedestals, don't yeah. they, for the body, these yeah, kind of yeah. sculptural reliefs, yeah, yeah. piano stools, screens. Yeah. Yeah. What's that language? What, how, what, do you, what do you see in that? What does it do for the pieces for you? Well, I was always trying to get people <coughs> to look at the body differently. And, and, mm. I, and I was thinking a lot about sculpture and mm -hmm. being influenced by some of my artist friends. And I was trying to figure out how and I realized at a certain point that if I just put these platforms, just raise the body just a little bit, it gave a new definition to how people could look at the body. Completely. So, yeah. Um, and for those that don't know your work so well, I would describe it as this kind of cerebral, conceptual meets the playful and whimsical. That's what I love. But the, the two really disparate elements um, that you think that don't necessarily go together. Um, have you thought about that, that just the position you must have done? I mean, for me, you know, the entertainment really does weave itself throughout the works. Yeah. There is some, lots of layering yeah, of conceptual yeah. framework, but that yeah. entertainment is even from the titling, yeah. from the soundtrack. Yeah. Do you just want to talk a little bit yeah. about yeah. where that entertainment came from? Or is well, it all I think that part of it was in the beginning, I, I remember having this phrase before I did the series, before I did the 20 Looks series. Mm. This is a series, 20 Looks of Paris of Burning Bridges and Church. Before I did that series, I had this idea of thinking feelings and feeling thoughts mm. and how that could be embodied. But then once I did the series, each side, and the, the series is divided into eight different sizes, mm. from extra small to extra large. And each size, I was kind of incorporating different ideas and layering the work. And so I think it was when I got to medium, I added entertainment. Mm. And I think it was part of the thing was questioning this idea because the conceptual dance movement was very anti completely anti entertainment. Yeah. And so I was <coughs> saying maybe to a lot of the things that people had said no to. Yvonne Rayner, Yvonne Rayner's no, no manifesto. manifesto, which a lot of people in the conceptual dance movement had adopted. And I was asking maybe to a lot of those things from the, from the standpoint of having been influenced by the theoretical ideas mm. underneath voguing. 
and I think that, um, um, yeah, I think that, that this idea that entertainment and, and, and art are separate is a, is a modernist kind of idea. Like, yeah. you know, like Victoria. It's not cool, is it? Yeah, no. To be entertaining yeah, but, <laughs> sometimes. But, but the Greek, but in the, the, I mean, in other civilizations, and certainly in the ancient Greek theater, certainly in Shakespeare, mm, I mean, the much, idea yeah. that entertainment mm. was separate from art was not the idea. So mm. I began to question that. And when I did the medium of the series, besides the kind of rarity that I was working on, the kind of connoisseurship, there was also entertainment. Yeah. And I think that that's something I've kept in the word. And for me, I mean, entertainment is vast. It's a vast word. It's it is. a lot about, also about pleasure, you know? Yes. And, and where do people find the pleasure in the work? Oh, I get enormous pleasure from your work. Being in your work, participating in your work like show pony or just being, or watching it like yeah. a normal punter. Um, but again, what is interesting about your work is you kind of traverse different cultures and time zones. Mm. You have everything in there from Japanese buto dancing, voguing, ancient classical theater, to popular culture, to runaway, the Harlem drag balls, to create these kind of historical mashups. That's how I kind of describe it. Yeah. Um, and you kind of peel the layers back. Where do you begin in, in layering that? Is it very instinctive? Um, how do you approach your research in that way? You're well, quite methodical, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think part of it is the sense that, that I think the history is always alive around mm. us. And I think that I really, I think one of the things that when I've, when his, I've met with historians at universities, the, the thing that surprises them is I really work in the imagination. I don't, mm. I don't, I'm not someone who tries to reconstruct the things that I do or I try to tell people my research. I, I trust that this stuff, that whether if I'm in the archives of Fiji mm. Kato or I'm in the voguing balls, where I, I trust that this will be a part of the stuff that, that, that goes into my senses and that it will come out a different way in now because I'm into to, to how the it present. can be the present, mm. in the present. So I think it's that sense that I, I really, and with the performers I mm. work with, I really, the rigorous thing is that we have, we force ourselves to work in the imagination and not to try to imitate or try to copy. So it isn't a kind of fusion idea. Mm. I, I mean, a lot of dance has been based, or some contemporary dance has been based on taking cultural forms and fusing them mm. together, but we don't do that. We really look at maybe the forms underneath it, the structures, what they were producing in terms of what kinds of performances, and use those as frameworks, frameworks. for our own imagination. Yeah. Um, yeah, you approach it from like an outsider perspective rather than trying to reenact it or recreate yeah, 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 it because yeah. then you're kind of pastiching it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. Um, the show is called Hoochie Coochie, Treasure Harrell Hoochie Coochie, a performance exhibition. Um, and actually, one of the centerpieces of the show is Kay No More, of which yeah, yeah. Hoochie Coochie, this exotic kind of belly dance like spectacle yeah. that kind of happened at the late 19th century in the Chicago yeah. Art Fair then became adopted and reinterpreted later into the 20th century, yeah. forms a framework for this particular piece. Tell us, how, what interests you in that particular dance form and how did that impetus for this project come about? Yeah, well, the real reason I began to, to be interested in it again it was because it was my first understanding as dance as a spectacle because my father would go to the Hoochie Coochie shows <laughs> when I was a little boy, but he didn't tell me. He would <laughs> take me to the fair and he would get rid of me somewhere, would give me cotton candy or candy apple and say, go over here, go ride this ride or sit me with friends. And he would go into the Hoochie Coochie show and I remember as a little boy starting to understand little by little based on the sign that I said with the woman with the dots and the hair, yeah. that this was, he was going to see naked ladies dancing. And so in 2008, I made a piece of one section is in one of the dances from that bathing suit mm -hmm. in, the, in the exhibition called Quartet for the End of Time. And I start to want to explore that. And then when I start to do kind of more, I again wanted to look at this idea of what, what did I imagine? Because it was only in my imagination. Exactly, because yeah. we never talked about it. I didn't and you know never see it. Went. I never saw mm. it. So, and then I realized also in the research that I was doing that this period of dance in the beginning probably was very connected to the beginnings of modern dance. And I thought this was very exciting because I think that the women who were making dance during this period didn't have the Barbican. They mm. didn't have dance umbrella festivals. They didn't have Sadler's Wells. They didn't have the kind of institutions mm. of support for making you know, artistic dancing that we have today. And yet they were so courageous to make an artistic dance and, and this mm, around the same period. And I thought that these, probably some of these women who were doing hoochie coochie dancing in the hoochie coochie shows also were probably 
you know, creative dancers or artistic dancers. And so trying to imagine, you know, where those links were mm. between um, the ideas that were going around in that time and what art could be, and I call it what dance was before it knew of itself as Yeah, dance. I always, always see the, like, you appreciate the underdog, the, the yeah. thing that doesn't make the canon yeah, yeah, as yeah. the accepted yeah, canon. Yeah, 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 yeah. But just going back now, this is, this is your first performance exhibition. You've rarely shown in the UK. You're very well known in the US and Europe. What do you hope visitors will kind of take away from seeing your work over this month period? Yeah. I think it's the things that you, I think that, I, I, I mean, I've always first, I try, I hope that the experience is something that, first of all, brings people together mm. and they realize the potential of togetherness. So I think that, that that's first, that they, that they have a certain type of experience. But I think the works, I think that all the things you talk about, like how, the things you talk about, that there is a cerebral, there is the conceptual, but there's also these other elements going on that are very linked to like people's daily lives, mm. maybe like what they wear or how they walk down the street or the music that they listen to. That, that, that it's something that they really can relate to in their lives and that they realize that contemporary dance and contemporary art have a place in terms of nurturing our understanding of who we are as human beings and, and how we you know, deal with the various things that we confront in everyday life. I mean, I hope that it provides, you know, some sort of hope, you know. Yeah, sort of, uh, that was yeah. a word that was yeah, immediately yeah, coming yeah, to my yeah. mind. It's a hopeful exhibition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's vibrant, it's yeah. sassy, it's playful, yeah, yeah. full of history and intrigue. Yeah, yeah. And I can't wait for it to finish rehearsals yeah, yeah. and see it unfold yeah. on the 20th of July. <laughs> yeah, well, thank, thank you very much, Chadro. Thank you, Layla, for all the work you're doing. <laughs> my pleasure. I have to interview you next. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs>